Hello, T Quilters. Today is Wednesday, September 20th, 2023, and we're here for live chat. Although today I'm actually going to be sewing as well. So let me pull up the comments. We're just waiting for people to come to come in get notifications I came in about a minute early um, let's see that's my notification to get into chat <laughs> your channel all right let's see we got lots of people in here i'm just going to read some first names because i'm probably going to be sewing the binding i have the binding onto the front of the quilt and i need to attach it to the back so that's going to take some time so I'm not gonna read the actual comments. Um, Brenda Foley is here, Melody Kiefer, Darcy Savelli is reminding people to hit the thumbs up button. I'm trying to pin her message. And also, if you haven't already, go join us over on the Facebook group, T Quilts LLC. You have three questions you need to answer before you can get approved. Uh, otherwise, I don't approve them because I don't know what accounts are real account and what accounts are spam accounts. Zondra's here, Vivian Calvi, Sandra Thompson, uh, Betsy Layton, Doris Dolores Feltz, June Hansen, Maddie Barnum, Quilt Gal, Janet McCarroll, Melinda Montoya. Ingrid Bowers, Kenani Roberts, Kim R, Linda Denton, Cheryl Knuckles, Christine H, Sue GSD, letting people know that there's 279 days until we follow our leader to the best retreat ever. <laughs> Kevin the Quilter. Coming to you from Colorado Springs. I'm surprised you're in here, sir. Benita Nance, Janice Miller, Sheila Willis, Carissa Renninger, uh, Jeff Galonia, Sheila, I said Sheila, <laughs> Francis Jackson, Wynn Sprinter, Catherine Nishi. I uh, hope I said your name right. Welcome to the live chat. Said it's her first time. Appreciate you commenting as well. Yo, Patty G. Grimo JS. Blackbird 022. And I think I got everybody. Um, I did have a couple of things that I, well, a couple of things that I had last time and I forgot to show you all, but I didn't know if you all knew this. Did you all know that Laura Birch Company, Laurel Birch, she they make clothing and totes and little bags and stuff. So I just ordered a few things just to show you. Um, I don't like I don't like stuff with like dogs or cats on them, but I kind of like the birds, the peacocks. That was cute. I thought that was cute. I got one just to show you guys because I didn't know if you all knew that. Did, did anybody know that? Thank you, Catherine. And you're, um, I got Catherine's with a K and Catherine, Catherine's with the C in my family. Lots of them, lots of the C's. It was my grandmother's name and she named two of her children that. And then 
one of my aunts named her child, my second cousin, Catherine with a K. So we got three Catherines. Like Bert says, those are pretty colors. Carissa says her birthday is Saturday. Best month to have a birthday. Yeah. And then this is a cross body bag, a small one. I think it'll be great. My problem is I have a wallet and it's like fat. And so I hope it fits in here. But I really like this. And then it's got the strap inside. All wrapped up for you with the hooks so that you can just hand carry it if you want. And then they've got these little things here on the top for you to hook, put the hooks into. So it's got, let's see. It's got two sides or two, it's like, is it two sides or just split? It's a split divider in the in the whole pouch and then on the back side there's a pocket for you to put like your driver's license or credit card and then on here they also have a driver's license or credit card pocket and they actually matched up i buy stuff like this to see how they match up that pocket is perfect on the on there and then on the front is two i think they matched it up again because there's a pocket right here, a larger pocket. So that's pretty cool. Very well made. I can't remember. I, I'm supposed to have shown you all this when I showed you my checkers order and I forgot to show it. It got, I put it back behind the board and then didn't get it. The board that I, this board that I moved because I got loose pieces I don't want to lose. <laughs> since I'm about to put binding on a quilt. But that's pretty cool. They're really pretty. So yeah, that is gorgeous. Um, Jeff says that would be great for Hawaii. And that's one of the reasons that I bought it because I wanted uh, some colorful stuff to wear and just put on like a pair of black or uh, jean pants. Uh, in July, they say it's like 70, 75 in Hawaii. Well, to me, that doesn't necessarily mean you wear shorts. <laughs> so I'll just be taking like leggings and jeans and stuff like that. Maybe one pair of capris or something. But yeah, um, this is too cute. I like this. So let me put this back up, put it back in the case. So I'm trying not to, I bought a, I bought a backpack, too, from Amazon. I guess I should have showed you all that. Um, love the top. I have Laura Birch bags and zipper pouch. Have fat quarter collections of a fabric. I have a lot of a fabric, but I didn't know. You know, it's great when somebody passed and the family understands the mission of somebody's legacy that's into stuff like this. And that uh, she wasn't selling this type of stuff when she was alive. And the fact that they're moving her company forward made that their job. I really love that, that um, her family is benefiting from her. Uh, just like Nancy's notions of Nancy Zeman of Nancy's notions is her family has is benefiting from her legacy as well. So I like it when the family understands the mission. <laughs> Um, and Christine says she has one of her totes. Uh, that was Michelle the quilter that says she loved the top. She has that she has uh, bags and zipper pouch. Uh, Jeff says that was Jeff saying it would be great for Hawaii. <laughs> uh, down at Branson saying hello to you and fellow quilters. Hope all is well. Judy Smith is here. Joyce Sterling. Thank you, Joyce, also for posting your first time in the chat. Appreciate you guys. When I see new names or if I think it's a new name, I try to welcome you guys. So welcome to the chat. I appreciate it. T, what's the website to order? Um, email me because I can, I can get them. I ordered off of Checkers, which is a distributor. So I can get them for you. And people are welcoming Joyce. You all are so nice. <laughs> all right. I do have, 
I don't even know whether to show this or not because I haven't even opened it. But I, ugh, I did get four different pieces of some African prints. Again, I'm, I'm doing test orders. I don't think this company, I like the fabric, but I don't think that they're going to be big enough to, for me to be wholesale. I can't make, I can't place a big enough order. I like their stuff, but they don't have enough. <laughs> Y'all know I order, I place, I don't know, like $3,000, $4,000 orders. So... It's so heavy. <laughs> Put it on the floor. Um, sometimes I have people that are looking for brown. I, this is my daughter. I'm going to have to send her. To, hopefully she'll call the house and my husband to pick up. But some people are looking for like browns. And sometimes I just don't have brown because... I'm not a brown person now. I did I did like this particular fabric though. So um yeah, this is really pretty. Let's see what it is. And to me it's a little bit darker on one side than the other. And she's talking about she thought it was Thursday. <laughs> I just answered the phone and let her hear me talk to you guys. So she, because otherwise she would bug me to death. <laughs> this one here I got, it has feathers. And I just thought it looked pretty on the screen. It looks like it's the same as that one. Yeah, it's got, it's a one-sided instead of necessarily being an Ankara per se. I can tell right from wrong side. I, I still like the fabric. I just, for quilting, it's fine. If you're making clothing, you may have to think about it. So I got a second one of those. And then I got two black prints and it's really the same print. Black with white print. But this is the large print. And this is the small. So, like that. And like I said, they don't, they didn't, they don't have a lot for me to order <laughs> at any one given time. And I don't think they, no matter what your order is, like sometimes when I place very large orders, I get shipping free. Like if I'm doing $3,000 orders. I get my shipping free. And I don't think this company gets free shipping at no price point. So I don't know if this company is going to work out. I just happen to like a few things that they have, but they don't have enough for me to like stock from them. I can't, you know, you all know how I come in here and I have 40 different prints. <laughs> uh, they don't have that type of inventory for me to order that type of an order. And T says she likes that brown a lot. That'll make a beautiful bag. Hi, Diane McCoy. And Michelle likes the feathers too. Christine says nice fabric. My brother's here saying hi, sis, and everyone. Jess says, how much was the feathers? I sell $13 a yard. Rochelle says, hello, everyone. Yeah, they are pretty. <laughs> yeah, and the feathers I actually got, was able to get two of that one, and the other ones are just one. So, yeah. All right. Um, I can do just talk some general stuff as I'm sewing. I don't know what I'm going to do with 
comments because I'm going to be sewing and the quilt's going to be hanging all over here. This ain't going to stay up here. We already know this, right? But we'll have an avalanche. <laughs> I've already, um, as I mentioned before, I already have the binding onto the front of my quilt. I'm going to talk a little bit about it because I think, well, I think most people know how to put binding on a quilt. I guess that's a whole nother subject. But I put my binding on on the long arm machine to the front of the quilt top after it's quilted. I use um, the binding itself because it's straight because I make sure I don't stretch it when I make it. And I use that to help with squaring up the quilt that's on the frame because sometimes my quilts may not be completely square. So I don't necessarily put it on the edge of a quilt. If my quilt is straight up and down, then yes, it's on the edge. But sometimes you'll have straight and it'll go out a little bit and come back in. I use my binding and I just make my straight line with the binding. So that's how I actually put my bindings, especially on quilts that I know I'm gonna do all machine work anyway, and that's any commission quilt. I don't do any hand work on commission quilts anymore. I used to hand sew it to the back, but I'm like, you know what? It's even more sturdier for them if I do it by machine uh, anyway. So that's what I end up doing. Diane says she likes the brown. Minnie retracted her message. Okay, I saw a big message coming through. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> but um, so I put it on on my long arm machine, number one. Number two is I put my label in one of my corners, my bottom corners. I don't feel like it makes any difference. I tend to put mine facing my quilt in the left bottom corner, just like I'm going to read from left to right. So I know my labels in my bottom left corner of all my quilts. That's just my habit. You can put yours in the bottom right if you like. It could be a left-handed thing that I'm doing that I'm putting it in the left bottom corner. Uh, you know, left-handed people think a little bit different. So, um, and then I sew, I base the two edges that are gonna be in the binding. And the reason I put the label on before I close off the binding is because I want, if anybody's looking at it, that's a nun sewer. I want them to think that they're taking, they, they're actually, they are unstitching the quilt to get the label out if you don't cut it out. So I'm trying to make it so that the average person that don't quilt think that they're gonna destroy the quilt if they try to take the label out, especially when it's somebody else's quilt. If I'm making a quilt for somebody, if, if it's a gift or if it's being commissioned, I put that information on the back, why I'm giving it to them and who it's for. <laughs> so if somebody sees a quilt, they can't just pick it up and claim it as theirs. And then the other final step, once I put the binding completely on the front, I then go to my ironing board. My uh, binding is normally put onto this side. I press the binding up. So this side is flat to my ironing board. And then I take it and go back around a second time and press it down. And that gives me memory. So when I'm at my machine about to top stitch in the ditch, it's got some memory of where I want it to lay. And I'm not going to be fumbling with or holding it and giving myself carpal tunnel trying to pull this around and make it fit. It's a lot easier to do that with heat. So that's why I use heat. Hi, Shaquita. And Nikki B. <laughs> so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this up. I guess I can show you the label. It's in one of the corners. <laughs> and then all I have to do once I do the stitching on top is I have two sides of my label that I hand sew. I don't like, personally like the diagonal corner labels because if I'm putting this much information on my label, then um, if I'm putting this much information on my label, it's going to be up higher in the quilt for me to go across the corner because I'm doing machine embroidery with my labels mostly. I've decided today to write the, write the word brightly with marker uh, since that's the name of the pattern. It is the Brightly Pattern by Cluck Cluck Sew. So I just wrote that and then 
Um, this quilt's called Brightly Green with Envy number two because I have made Brightly Green with Envy for myself. Um, so yeah, so when I get through sewing this, then all I've got to sew on the label by hand is this part down and this part down. Now I have just sewn a label onto my backing fabric, but you know, if sometimes stuff don't roll straight on my long arm and then it drives me nuts if my label is kind of tilted a little bit. So I just go ahead and wait till I do it afterwards. You could quilt your label in and then you really don't have to worry about somebody taking it apart at that point. Thank you, Maddie says, beautiful quilt. <laughs> Campbell's Creation is here saying hello to everybody. All right, so what I got to do now is unfold this because I just folded it up so I could get in here. And I'm just going to start on any side. It doesn't matter. I've got my, like I said, my, my, my edging isn't staying folded, but when I go to sew this, when it's under the presser foot, it just lay right there. You can see from my hand how it's laying. I don't have to use any pins. I don't have to use any glue. Thank you, Christine, saying ooh la la. <laughs> yeah, I love this um, apple grunge. It's one of my favorites, although I've made two quilts with it now. I might be overwhelmed with it. I still love it, but I won't be using any more after I get through with this quilt for a while. <laughs> but I do love this uh, apple green. I actually love grunge, period. So, um, That's a great idea for the label. I always have trouble getting all the info on a label. That's from Joni. And... Celia Swain is here saying hello, everybody. So, yeah. Thank you, Nikki, saying pretty. All right, so I have increased my stitch length to like 2.75. That's what I'm doing now. And then I'm just going to stitch in the ditch. And I am going to hold these tails and then back stitch just a little bit. Uh, two stitches is really enough because I'm going to come back and go over it, but I don't want, uh, you know, when you have the tails, when you first start, you want to make sure that it's, you know, it's locked in. So I'll go over just a little bit when I come back around. All right. And so then all I do is just make sure that back here where my hand is, that I'm making sure that it's just folded under, that 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 press that I put in here is along the edge of my quilt. And then I can just go through here and sew this. And I don't have to worry about it catching. If you're concerned about it, you can just flip it back and look and see. And of course, I don't have enough done to show you guys, but you always want to look and see if you're catching your binding. I'm trying to get my thread tails now. Y'all know I can't stand thread tails. <laughs> Anybody that's watched me long enough know I go after them. All right. <clears throat> Let me tilt this down. I didn't think this was going to stay. Right now it's doing good. Hello, Teresa Louise, I quilt too. <laughs> And I am using matching thread on the back of the quilt. I don't know if I showed you all that. This is what I have on the back. These colors work very well with the color on top. I used this, this color on top for quilting, the apple greenish color thread, and it looks fine on the back, so I'm okay with that showing. So you, you may have to use two different thread colors, you know, if you want. In this instance, I am not. I'm using the same thread. Um, are you using a walking foot? No, ma'am. I hardly ever use a walking foot. I know a lot of people do, but they have not been something that I enjoy using. And that could be because my first machines when I started quilting were singer machines and maybe they didn't have the you know it was just generic walking foot 
It wasn't like a precision walking foot like it's on the Foth that came out with it first. Foth is the first person that came out with the regulated stitch type stuff. And that was in place of a walking foot. I just have never liked them. So I don't use them. I'm trying to pull it down a little bit so you all can see. It doesn't bother me that it's going back, but I know I'm filming. And then I'm coming up on a corner. Now, when I hand sew my bindings down, I stitch my corners down too. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to ride along here and stitch this ditch down so that the back doesn't pop up. And I'm just going to make sure it's flat because I'm turning it. And then I'm going to reverse stitch back to where I started. So I'm back in that ditch. And if you're not perfect in there, you can just lift your presser foot and put it, put, you know, rotate the needle and put it exactly where you want it. Okay. So now I'm just going to adjust my quilt so I got the next side in my lap. Make sure everything is nice and flat on the bed of my machine. And I'm going to stitch. And when I get through this corner, I'll show you a little bit once I get enough that I can turn it around. Because I started like in the middle of one side. So. I'll show you the front and the back. <laughs> and when I'm pressing, uh, uh, pressing like folding my machine, binding to the back. I'm making sure that it's covering the stitch line. Every once in a while I might miss, but for the most, the majority, I get this exactly right. Okay. So this is the back of my quilt top where it's stitching on top of the binding on the back. And then on the front, you're not going to be able to see it because I have stitched right in the ditch, right along here, and you can't even see that. <laughs> so, but I just wanna show you that it will work if you're pressing it and it doesn't come over to your binding, you know, the line where you stitch the binding to the front, you're gonna need to do some trimming because it's not gonna magically work when you get to the sewing machine. So I try to watch it as I'm, ironing it down. Sometimes I'm watching TV when I'm doing that and I might miss something. And so then I have to fix one part or sew one part by hand, you know, like whatever I missed, I just load up a hand needle and then I'll go and uh, fix whatever it is that I mix. But that's not all the time. I try to make sure the goal for me is to make sure that when I fold that fabric to the back, that it's covering the stitch line on the front, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's see. Minnie I'm, says, T, I'm researching AccuQuilt Ready Set Go Kit because it has the cubes. What is your opinion on whether it is a good choice starting out with, I deleted the first because I wasn't ready to send. Um, I think you get a better bargain price when you because they reduce the price when you buy bundles of anything so if those are the dies that you feel like you're going to use then I would say yes because I know I first got um I wouldn't use my die cutter when I had just a strip die and the value die I had to invest in some stuff that I wanted to make that was difficult for me to cut so if that's what you want to make and you know that's what you want to make, then go ahead and go for it. But uh, now it's funny because I use my traditional dies, my piecing dies more than I use the other dies. And that's because now that I've when I got myself using it and I made a, a place for it so it sits out, it made it so that I use it all the time. So I can be needing like 
three four and a half inch squares and guess what i'm gonna go do i'm gonna go cut it on the thing because it's sitting right there already ready for me <laughs> so uh, i'm getting my money's worth out of it because i have a dedicated spot so I say purchase whatever it is that you want. And anytime you're buying a kit or a bundle of something, it's always a lot cheaper. And if anyone is purchasing from AccuQuilt, make sure that you go into the description box of my video and click on my affiliate link. Um, you can still use any coupons, any rewards you have, gift certificates. Just go over there from my YouTube video first before you go. I I'll appreciate it. AccuQuilt is, you know, it's an expensive system. I don't uh, recommend like people that are very new to quilting purchasing it right away. But if you've made a few quilts and you know that you love quilting and you're going to, that's where you're going to spend your time, then yes, please, you know, AccuQuilt can be for you if you've got the money. It's not a cheap system. Everything you want to cut, you got to have a die for that. And it took me years to build up my die library. Um, you know, and some people, I didn't do it, but some people, like they would go in, like if you got local friends that quilt and you all, all have your own cutter, they would like buy different dies and then just borrow each other's dies as well too. That's another way to start out but i never started that because my friends don't buy stuff every once in a while i just loan something out to my friends but uh i'm not really borrowing anything from anybody else my library is very extensive of AccuQuilt guys but it took me years i've been using AccuQuilt for a very long time i don't know what year they came out but i was using it really fast after that <laughs> I found out about AccuQuilt via Ebony Love videos on YouTube I was following her apple green is a beautiful color choice thank you Damali Sue says, her file 1471 is the only machine I use the walking foot on. I haven't been happy with others. Paula says, T, the apple green is absolutely beautiful. Do you have any to sell? I don't think so. I'll check. <laughs> I don't think so, but I'll check and see what I got in stock. Because I didn't even uh, unwrap it. You know, I rewrap my stuff so it's not set up on the regular bolts. Uh, it takes less space when I fold it in half and then wrap the whole thing. It just gets fatter, but, um, and then I made kits too. So I have to see, uh, Paula, email me and let me know how much you're looking for. So when I check it, I, I'll know what I have. Beautiful colors. And how was Jason's birthday? And how is Miss Jersey doing? It's not Jason's birthday. It was Kevin's birthday. And I have to have to, you know, get little Miss Jersey again. We've had a lot of stuff going on. And so we still got stuff going on. And I haven't had Jersey over. So I need to get Jersey to come back over on a day I'm live so you all can see her again. Because, honey, she is just growing up a storm. She's about 19 pounds. And she's got to be like around 21 inches long. She is a long baby. She was, she might be longer than that. I'm not sure. I have to ask my daughter. But she's doing just fantastic, honey, living her best life. <laughs> she refused to even put her hand on the bottle. She'll, when she see it coming, she'll guide it up to her mouth. And then she knows that you have it because you bringing it. And so then once she gets it in her mouth, she just drop her hands on it like she on vacation and just relaxing. OK, we try to put her hands up there so she can start trying to hold her bottle. She is not having that. She is a true princess. OK. <laughs> she is a princess. Maddie says you make it look easy. It's, it's easy, Maddie, because. I press this binding down and all I'm doing is making sure 
that I got this straight edge over here. I know you all can't see what I'm sewing, but this is this straight edge is up against the edge of what I've pressed in and it's right up against the edge of my quilt. It makes it easy and everything is laying flat because it's got that pressed memory. I used, um, when I made my binding, I starch it before, when I, after I sew my binding pieces together, I add another layer of starch to the binding before I, as I'm folding it in half, but I let the, I always let my starch sit and soak into the fabric so it's not just gonna go straight to my iron. And so it's got memory. So when I went back with the steam iron and pressed this to the back, it's, it's, it's now activated a little bit of that starch. So it's got some memory going on with it now. So starch is your friend. <laughs> And I want to do one more little stitch here, but I'm going to manually do it because I'm like half a stitch out from where I want to be. <laughs> so you can use your hand wheel, people. Your hand wheel is your friend when you want to have something in an exact spot. Then it takes me back just a little bit further. It's right along the upper border and I want it on the side. So I'm just going to move it to where I want to put it by using the hand wheel. That way you don't see this big thread going across your corner. And it's like I said, I just moved it into position and not even messing with the binding and it's already flipping itself into position. I don't have a lot to do. <laughs> I've done all the prep work. I've done extra steps to make sure that I get this correct. And so that's what's happening with that. <laughs> Lenora Baptiste says, good evening, everybody. It's been a long time since I've been here. Welcome back. And Jason Lewis says, I really need to start using my AccuQuote. Yes, you do. You won't use it if you don't make yourself get accustomed to it. And I think a lot of people, don't use it because they haven't used it. And so it's gonna take you longer initially. But one of these days you're gonna need 300 half square triangles and you ain't gonna wanna square all that stuff up. And then that's when you're gonna pull out that AccuQuilt. <laughs> Cause Bonnie Hunter did it for me. Telling me I needed 600 half square triangles. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not paper piecing anymore cause I gotta pull the paper. I'm not going to cut squares and then I got the, you know, you cut them bigger and then you have to square them up. I'm not doing that 600 times. I went and got that AccuQuilt. <laughs> First time she did it, I didn't even have the dye. I went and bought the dye. I was behind waiting on my dye to come in because I didn't care. Because <laughs> mm -mm. it takes you a minute before you get a half square triangle in almost every size that you're going to need for projects. Uh, yes, it is, Christine. Asking, is it just zesty apple green? Um, and Ellen cuts all of her 1.5 inch strips with the hacky quilt. June says, I find mine in Nancy Zeman. She would have a booklet on it. It was on sale at the time, and I get a good bargain when I got mine. I don't know what. June is talking about it. She's talking about AccuQuilt. Minnie says, cutting is what I hate is why I'm interested. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we have difficulty cutting, uh, even understanding how to cut. And then sometimes we have um, hand issues or eye issues that prevent us. So sometimes it's a medical reason why cutting isn't good for you. So I love the AccuQuilt. The one thing you will need to do if you are die cutting is you need to start your fabric. <laughs> it stabilizes it and makes it a little bit stiffer. And then you need to put that lengthwise of grain going into the machine because it stretches less. Oops. I think I got more of that uh, strip stuff in here. Must be floating around when I'm moving the quilt. You know from that 
jelly roll race quilt I did. <laughs> I see little specks of it on the quilt here. So it's flying back around. I'm talking and it's going in my mouth. <laughs> Got my neck all up now, <laughs> trying to read from the top. Uh, um, the Dorsey says, with the grandma like you, the jersey's going to have a great life. Yes. Uh, and Tantrum is here, says, hi from New Zealand. Ooh, love the colors. Thank you. I know my uh, cousin, it can't wait to get it. Um, people always ask me, what do I charge for commission quilts? I'm doing her quilt at a discount. I'm only charging her $400 for a piece quilt. The kit that I sold when I sold kits, the kits were $200. So I'm only charging her $200 to piece her quilt provide batting, provide backing, and quilting, and now I'm binding. So I haven't even really charged her anything for my time. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how much it costs to make a quilt, how much time is involved. And so, but if you're willing to at least spend 400, this is a lap size, it's a 60 by 72, because people always ask me, how much do I charge? But this is, uh, this, I normally charge this rate for a t-shirt quilt. So um, that would be like twin size. So 60 by 80, somewhere in that neighborhood. It could be 64 by 84, but it's, I'm trying to go for a twin size bed when I do t-shirt quilts, unless they request something bigger. Then they pay more money. <laughs> but I do uh, $400 for just a t-shirt quilt. And that's because... Uh, I know that there are some internet companies that'll make you a cheap, <laughs> cheaply made t-shirt quilt. They don't use batting. They don't quilt them. It's just this big thing that they flip. They birth it is what it's called. You just sew around the outside, leave an opening, you turn it, and then you sew around the outside just to close the edge. Um, I don't like that. I want my I don't like saggy quilt tops and then they're holding them up and you can see at the bottom of the quilt from the weight of the t-shirts it's like sagging hanging over the edge of the quilt at the bottom I don't like that I like stuff to look professionally done I actually quilt my t-shirt quilts with an all-over panto so yeah All right, I gotta do my corner. And Sue is reminding people, don't forget to use T's AccuQuilt link, <laughs> thank you. And I have it on my Facebook group too, the link. You say that while I am sitting here trimming up 50 geese. See, you are so wrong. Uh-uh, I haven't. <laughs> y'all, I use scrub rulers when I'm doing stuff with y'all. Or like I do a flip corner, like a snowball or something like that. I'll, you know, I have to do that because I don't have that particular die or that piece, uh, you know, able to cut. But any half square triangle that I use uh, from like one inch finish up to, I might have eight inch finished, okay? I ain't playing around. So I got every size, like they don't make half sizes on the larger ones. They go up to like, They'll have a four and a half finish size, five, and then it's gonna go to six inch finish, seven inch finish, eight inch finish. I think I got that. Yeah. I don't know if they got seven. I have to look and see. I haven't used seven inch finished, but I know I have eight. Yeah, I don't mess around. I went and got everything that I'm gonna use. <laughs> I don't even know what side I'm on because I can't remember. I think I've done three corners. So yeah, 
So I'm coming down here on the fourth corner now. Well, when I get down there, I'm just starting. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I read the comments too. <laughs> Sue says, they have a die for that, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and T says that right I need to start using mine problem is pulling it out each time that's right and what I did was I made sure I had a spot now there are times that I'll stack stuff on top of my I have the studio I have every cutter but I leave my studio cutter out if I'm going somewhere I might take the other ones I'm eventually going to sell probably the other ones but I don't know yet I usually sometimes will teach classes and take the different machines in um, but I know I don't need them all. But um, you got to fit it out so you use it because when I'm doing optional blocks and it says I need those particular sizes, no matter what I put in my pattern instructions for you all, I have die cut my pieces, okay? <laughs> I ain't cutting all of that and squaring that up. It can be two half square triangles. I'm going to go make them. Like uh, this month's block has half square triangle. I went and cut them on my die cutter. I'm not going to do that. I made myself get used to it so I, it's automatic. I don't even think about it. I pull that thing out so quick. I pull, if it's just like a, you know, small number, I might pull out my little go baby and cut. Um, Christine says she's going to try my technique with the binding. Yes. Um. Diane 57 is here. I didn't see her. Oh, I see it now. I've just missed it. <laughs> My screen's scrolling while I'm talking. Christine's reminding people to hit the thumbs up button. Yes, please hit the thumbs up button for me, please. And Diane is reminding people as well. Maria Quarterman is here, says I feel the same way. Also, when I quote my when I quote my t-shirt quilt. I make sesh sections around each block and I quilt right. Uh, I just, if I see a saggy t-shirt quilt, I, it has, it takes everything in me to not comment about that quilt. I don't, but I have to like shut it down. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, you know, when somebody paid $150 for a t-shirt quilt, because it looks like they paid $150 for a t-shirt quilt. Thanks, Diane57. Sandy Agger is here. Hey, Sandy, welcome. Oh, Lord. My uh, screen went down. And that means I might lose my chat comments. Okay. Good Lord. Whew. All right. So we're going into our fourth corner. We got to go about into the middle of the next um, piece. I'm hot all of a sudden, I guess because this quilt's in my lap and I've been just reading comments while it's just sitting there. <laughs> so, yeah. So once you do all the prep work on this machine binding, it makes your life a lot easier. Again, if you see when you press this binding to the back that it is not covering your stitches, you need to trim. Don't forget that. I don't I didn't have to do that. <laughs> You need to trim and I will trim like say if it's just one little area like remember when I said if I have to square something up on somebody's quilt that I'm putting a binding on and it's a little wavy out here on this outer side then I'll trim that out so that it won't make the you know that it won't affect the binding as well. So but other than that I don't do I don't need to do any trimming. I try to make sure, you know, when I'm long arm quilting that I'm putting the quilt on as square as possible. It depends on how, to, how well the piecing is done. I'm in here about to have a hot flash with this quilt. Whenever I get hot is when I have a hot flash and my fan is on medium. I have my fan on medium on regular because I don't really sew with these additional two lights I use for recording. Um, so I have my fan on just medium and I forget to put it back on high when I come in here for videotaping. Okay, I don't see any comments, so.
And like I said, this quilt is not very big. It's just got a lot of pieces. It was 30 blocks. And uh, it's 60 by 72. And she wanted a lap quilt. So that's why there is no border on this one. On mine, I ended up putting a border on my quilt. But she just wants um, a lap quilt because she's not sharing it with any her kid. Her, she got three boys and her husband. And she ain't sharing it with them. She said, this is her quilt. Now... Why am I selling my cousin a quilt? <laughs> that that could be a question as well because I give quilts away. I make quilts for people, um, especially people uh, at remembrance type quilts. I do make some quilts for people for free depending on who they are. Um, why am I charging my cousin? It's because I've made her a quilt before already when she was younger. I made her and her mom a quilt. I boxed them up. They live in Alabama. I sent them to them in Alabama. And when she asked me to make her a quilt, I said, I've already made you a quilt because I have a list of all the quilts that I've made. <laughs> so I know who I made quilts for. And I got so many new family members that I haven't even gotten to make quilts for. Um, and so she wanted me to make her a quilt. I said, I only really do one free quilt per fam you know, per person. And I, you know, I make, I have beautiful work. <laughs> so it's not like I'm, and I have a very large family. It was 12 of my mother. My grandmother had 12 children that lived, that survived. And so I have made a quilt for everybody in my family tree at the time when I stopped. And now I've got all these new babies that I haven't made quilts for. Like my cousin, I haven't made quilts for her babies. And eventually I will be making them quilts. And she will not pay for those three quilts, but she has to pay for this quilt. And she told me, I said, where is your quilt that I made you already? And she remembers it and everything. She says she's grown. She's in her mid thirties. <laughs> and her mama got her quilt and won't give it to her. Now I made a quilt for her mama and I made a quilt for her and her mama is holding her quilt hostage. I, I have nothing to do with that. If she can't tell her mama to give her her quilt, I don't I don't think I can tell her mama to give her her quilt, can I? I don't know. That's that's crazy. So that's why she's paying for this quilt. <laughs> I've already made her a quilt and it's beautiful too. And her mom won't give it to her. She got her own kids. I think she old enough to you know, take care of her own quilt. I do. I do. But that's funny. I make one quilt because I don't want them. I got too large of a family for me to be making all the quilts for free. <laughs> so when they willing to pay something for their quilt, like I said, I didn't even charge her any labor time. And I think I'm probably going to be over two hundred dollars when I add a batting, backing, binding fabric and the quilting and the putting, the you know, doing the actual work. I do charge for that because it's already in my uh, software that I use to charge for long arm quilting uh, prices. So I'm going to give her that. She's going to be well over $200 with just that. So I haven't charged her a dime for making it. She's just paying retail price for the supplies. And she has a scrappy quilt. Think about that. You know, scrappy quilts should cost more. They and the people who don't sew think scrappy quilts should cost less because, you know, it's it's extra fabric. It's leftover fabric. It's like, uh, first of all, I cut this myself from regular fabric. It wasn't scraps because I cut kits. <laughs> and second of all, it takes longer because I've got to press more fabric when I'm doing scrappy quilts, and that's what people don't understand. If I was cutting. Uh, 50 squares from yardage, I could do that in less than a minute. I, you know, all these different tools we got. If I'm cutting 50 squares from scraps, that's a whole nother issue. It takes longer. I got to press more fabric pieces. You know, some of them going to look like they're going to be five inches and then some of them are 
it's not going to make it when you actually get to cutting it. So it's a lot going on with scrappy quilts. Thank you, Remo's reminding people to hit the thumbs up button, show your love and support for the Queen of Scraps Educator. She is honest with us. Love and peace. Uh, Tammy Boyd's here saying hello to everyone. Hey, Tammy, welcome. I can't remember if you've been in here before. Your name sounds familiar, but it, it could be just because it's Boyd. I have I know a lot of Boyd's. <laughs> uh, Christine says, it's okay to charge your cousin. Quilts are not cheap to make and your time is priceless. Yeah. I have one lady at my gill that she does piece her family's quilt tops free and then they pay her for the, uh, she takes them, sends them out to get them uh, long arm quilted. So she charges them for that and the batting, I think, and the backing, but she does the top form for free. So I don't know what she charges because all her quilts are huge. Uh, they're mostly like queen size or larger, mostly when she's giving them away to her family. So, yep. Oops, I'm coming up. I'm at the end, y'all. Well, look at God. <laughs> I've been just talking. I forgot I had turned the fourth corner. And that's where I started, where I backstitched. So I'm going to overlap about two or three stitches just to make sure. Make sure that this doesn't come loose. And then cut my thread. So we're done. All I gotta do now is just like I said, hand sew those two corners that I, on my label, the other two corners were covered by my binding. That's why I never wait to the end to do my labels. It saves me from to hand sewing on two sides. So now it's covered in the binding on two sides. The other two sides, I just fold under a quarter inch seam. You can fold it twice if you want. I just do once and um, I just hand sew that down. So that's something that I'll be doing in bed later on. I just fold the quilt up with the label on the outside and then I just take it and hand sew it while I'm looking at television or something. So let me pull you guys back over. And see how quick that was? It's not even eight o'clock. <laughs> and I showed you fabric. Uh, I did send out two emails today for a retreat. One was reminding people about payments that went to everybody, whether you were paid in full or not. And then the other one went only to people who hadn't turned in their registration form. So I'm reminding people to get your registration forms in. I think I have 18 out of 32 that I've received currently. So please check your emails, check your spam folder as well. Um, I have been asking people, people asking me about what is our 2024 sew along. This is not going to be <laughs> for beginner quilters. These are some little bitty blocks. Uh, this whole quilt top is only 74 inches by 86 inches. It's called Dresden Village. I think I only purchased like 30 patterns or something like that. And so this is what it's going to be. The pattern doesn't have it on here because it's mine. I think it's 14. I can't remember what the price is. I'm just going to guess and say $14. And then it's uh, when January rolls around, everybody would just be cash apping me for the fee to get into the Facebook group. So I'm just going to wait and do that because I don't have it. Um, I don't have it set up anyway, or I'll wait until like maybe December, the first part of December and set it up. And then I haven't even figured out that part yet. I have to make a, I have to make a schedule for how we're going to complete this. So this is what our 2024 sew along is going to be. Judy says, are all your labels the same color? Um... Because I could have used my grunge, but I didn't have any scraps big enough for my label. And I wasn't going to go cut my grunge to make a label out of it off, off a of yardage. <laughs> 
And so I always have white or and off-white muslin that I have behind my machine here that I can always use for quilt labels. And so sometimes I'll do that. And especially if I know I'm going to be drawing on them with markers, which I knew I was going to put the brightly in marker. So uh, I just wanted to put something that was done by my hand on this particular quilt because it's in the family. Normally I put everything in the embroidery, but for this one, I just wanted to at least put um, my something that I made by my own hand in the label as well. Uh, so a lot of my labels, yes, they are white on the back so that you can see the information it shows up. When you put it on your bed, and especially if you've got a footboard, it, uh, it tends to be hidden by the footboard. But uh, I don't worry about it as much. <laughs> I just put my label on the quilt. Uh, Carissa, that was a question from Judy Hebert, just so we keep track. Thank you, Zondra, saying beautiful quilt. Um, Carissa says, I'm on disability. People just assume I can eat all of the costs. I only sold one quilt. Yeah, and I, the funny thing is, this is the second quilt i have to say my second quilt that i've sold to someone in my family uh, they're the last ones to understand what we're going through uh, i mostly sell quilts to people that want custom quilts created for a particular something and that's where i do most of my sales to and those people when somebody contacts you wanting a quilt they don't care what it costs they want what they want and I, I don't overprice them, but if I, as we're going through the process and if they're making changes and I feel like they're a problem, then my price also includes a problem um, fixer in it as well. Because when they make changes, then I make changes to my price. And so every time they come back, say they want something changed, and I said, okay, then I can do that and it's going to cost blah, blah, blah. And a lot of them just say whatever because they want what they want. <laughs> <laughs> so uh carolyn is here carolyn bowser says your quilt is beautiful i love the colors thank you i'll try to go out and uh tomorrow because i'm going to try to get this in the mail because she's waited a whole entire year <laughs> for me to make this quilt for her okay so i'm trying to get it done and get it in the mail so she can get her quilt so Yeah, people really want us to sell them a quilt for like 50 bucks and then they're happy. Anything else is like they could care less about uh, a quilt because I can go to Walmart and buy it. Well, then you go do that. <laughs> this is the Brightly pattern. Remo saying hers was in her spam. I tell you all, all the time, check your spam folders for some reason because I have my own um, email extension, tquilts.com. Um, I'm not well known like walmart.com. <laughs> and so a lot of my mail will go into your spam folder. And especially if you're using Yahoo as a browser. Hi, Greenland quilter. Uh, Carissa says hers was a baby quilt. I got to decide what I was going to make and the color. So I sold it for $200. Yeah, I, I did that for my cousin. She wanted a, um, it was a rainbow baby and all she wanted was just a rainbow quilt. So I had fun. I actually made all kinds of different blocks with my using my die cutter so I could die cut everything. And um, I just made rows of blocks. So I used like, you know, three different shades of red to make a block, three different shades of orange or yellow or whatever I was doing so you could see the contrast, but I kind of made like rainbow rose for her and she loves it. She loves it. Um, Greenland Quilters currently in the middle of this. I think that's Katie. It's in the middle of making a quilt. The receiver is paying me 500 USD for it. He didn't even flinch when I told him that. Yes. And those are the people you want to deal with. I have one lady that uh, her and her husband, I worked with her and she would see me at work and she, she had said, 
would you teach me how to make a t-shirt quilt? I said, sure. And she never stayed after work because we would stay after work the first and third Fridays of the month. I had a craft club, so you didn't have to quilt. It could be any craft. So we had crocheters and cross stitchers in there as well. And, um, and she never stayed. And then when I retired, she go, oh my goodness, you never taught me how to make a quilt. Now this two years, three years later, okay. <laughs> and she ended up her and her husband ended up having me make the quilt that's the hockey quilt and it ended up being a queen size and they were willing to pay for their quilts and then that was years ago while I was you know and then um let me see two years ago because it was after COVID I want to say two years ago they wanted to give quilts to their parents and one of them, one of the parents were deceased and then they had, so they wanted three quilts made. One was a musical quilt. One was St. Louis Cardinals and the other one was St. Louis Blues. And they had no problems paying me for those <laughs> quilts. You just got to have, know your clientele. When I know that I got somebody in front of me that's not, that's not going to want to pay, I always overprice just so I can get them away from me and I don't have to deal with them anymore. I don't even give them like a price that they might really consider <laughs> because you can kind of tell by who, who you're talking to and what, how they're talking to you whether or not they're going to want to pay the money. But it's amazing to me that people can get in line at 3 a.m. for the new Jordan tennis shoes when they come out and pay full price for that. But then they want a family discount when we're making stuff for them. So that's just how it is. You know, that's how our families do us. <laughs> Oh, okay. June was saying that was Nancy. She was talking about with AccuQuilt. Okay. Yeah. Francis says, T, I'm working on the Brightly Quilt. I'm still piecing and it's taking forever. Why did I decide to make a twin size? Yeah, I would have just made whatever the 30 blocks and then you can always add additional top and bottom borders or, you know, to get stuff uh, to the right length and then add your side border so there's ways of making quilts bigger without making it look like it's a border quilt you piece some of the borders you add some uh, plain borders piece some of them and it makes the quilt look interesting without you having to piece a lot of the blocks and when i'm saying piece borders i'm talking about like larger size half square triangles they make all kind of designs just a half square triangle so yeah but you'll get to the end. What I call it is piece reduction. If I start out with 2,000 pieces and, I, and they all are half square triangles, if I sew them all together, I've done half the pieces once I've sewn them all together. So now I only have 1,000 pieces. So I like uh, in my head dealing with numbers because it satisfies me to know, okay, you did start with 2,000, but now you only have 1,000. And so then as I'm piecing stuff and getting rid of uh, getting rid of pieces, sewing those half square triangles into pairs or something, and then I've got half again and I'm at 500 um, pieces instead of when I started with 2000. So I get a kick out of knowing that I'm doing what I call piece reduction. And, and so that keeps me motivated when I've got a lot of pieces in a quilt. Good night, Darcy. We're going to get off here in a minute. I'm over eight. I just want to make sure I get a chance to answer any final questions. Oh, Francis got a new puppy. <laughs> Somebody uh, saying that it was a Harley Davidson. I've done that quilt. I, I wanted to keep that quilt. He was a, he was a problematic customer as well. And the person who referred him to me was a quilter in my guild. And I kept asking her, like, I don't want to take your customer. Why don't you do the quilt for him? She said, I don't want to deal with them. And I'm like, OK. So when I met him, I'm everything kosher and stuff. So then he asked me to make it. I said, fine. So then I sent him some different designs and gave him different prices based on what those designs were. And then he he saw that I had a quilt that looked like a puzzle, which is the one that he ended up going with because he didn't want his quilt to look uh, just your standard t-shirt quilt where they're all in a row. He, his friends had those and he wanted something that he could show off with. 
So then he writes me back and he says, uh, because he, he's, he was a builder. So he knew that there was, I had to know a lot in order to piece partial scenes because this was a puzzle type quilt where I had to do a whole lot of partial scenes. I had to piece this part before I can put this part together and so forth. And him being a builder, he knew that. So then he comes back and he says, you know what I really would like? I would like a quilt that's made in the Harley Davidson emblem. And I said, nope, I'm not going to do that. And you know why I didn't do that? Because Harley Davidson will come after me because it's not a free quilt. I'm selling it, number one. And we already know that he's not going to keep it quiet because he already want to go show it to his friends, right? <laughs> I said, uh-uh, y'all ain't going to have Harley knocking on my door. <laughs> no, you will not. I'm not going to put you, make your quilt in the shape of the Harley emblem. Mm -mm, not today. <laughs> uh, the quilt I'm making is from So Becca's Exploding Start quilt pattern. I only make quilts for my family, gifts, and I'm not good enough to sell mine. Have you ever made a quilt? and love the pattern to make another one. I actually love the first Brightly quilt that I've done, but I had no desire to make another one. That's why it took me a year to make my cousin's quilt because I even sold her kit saying, I was even telling y'all, I'm not making that quilt again. I'm gonna um, just make her something else. <laughs> and then I decided, girl, make this girl quilt. So I had to go back and recut all of these fabrics to make her quilt because I'm like, She's at least willing to pay most of what her quilt is worth. I should at least make what she said she liked. She liked the green and she liked the burgundy. Though She said that green and the burgundy that I used in the stars were her favorite two colors. And she says, I don't know how you put those together. And then I just, I, I, I assume it was okay for me to use African prints because that's what she saw in the original pattern and the kit she had purchased. So... That's why I still did the African uh, prints. But these are her favorite colors and this is what she wants. She, so this is what I'm making what she wants. <laughs> I broke down and recut it out. Good night, uh, Ray. He's saying good night to everybody. Catherine says, I'm working on the Cleopatra's Garden Gate mini curves. I love the notches, the curves line up great, worth having. We did that in 2020, I think. I have my quilt top done, but I don't have, I, I can't figure out what borders I want to put on it. So it's at a stall right now, but I have, I love the Cleopatra's uh, fan is what the pattern that I had was called. Rhonda says, you, T, you have a Facebook about a trade in of the Aki quilt. When does that end or is that not for you? That, uh, I think it's to the end of the month. I have to look and see. So this is why I like to stay and uh, just ask questions. It don't matter what the topic is. I try to answer questions if I can. See if I can find the email they sent me. They sent it four days ago. And let me go down here and see. I have to, this text is so small, I read better without my glasses, so. Trade up and go. Let's see. It doesn't have a date at, uh, at the top. I didn't notice that, okay. So let's just press on the link. <laughs> okay. It might be one of those things that's just going to be there on their, be on their web, on their website. Like if you have a GoMe and you can get a hundred dollars refund, hundred and thirty dollars refunded if you buy a Go, or you can get a hundred and fifty six dollars in reward points. And if you have the Go, and you go for the Go Big. You say 230, they'll give you a $230 refund. And 
or you can get 276 in reward points. So I'm going to assume that they're going to give you that off of your current order, I hope, um, because I haven't done it and I have no need to do it because I have all of their die cutters, even the studio. So uh, I don't know if you got to wait till the next order and you'll be ordering dies or if they're, they're saying refund. To me, when it says refund, it means that they're going to give you money. And so then that to me says that it should be able to come off your current order because who wants to process a refund and send you a check? Uh, I'd rather just go ahead and take it off your current order where you qualify. So it doesn't, I think it's just going to be one of those standing things. Now, the thing with AccuQuote is that they'll change the amount without notifying people. So that's going to be the issue. So currently those are the current rates. And I, this is coming up right before Christmas shopping, too. So uh, that might make some difference, too. And one thing I do recommend this time of the year, because we are getting close to Christmas shopping time, if you can wait for some stuff, sometimes they have, if you don't see a sale on it now, you might want to wait because every week they'll put something different on sale um, right before Christmas, like the last two months of Christmas. November, December, and sometimes it'll go even after Christmas into January. So I always tell people if you can, and it's not on sale, wait. If you can't get uh, at least 30, 40% off or whatever it is you want, um, then I would wait until Christmas time. You get more, you can buy more things for your money. Maria says she's working on a Serenity Prayer machine embroidery i did the footnotes uh it was through i want to say anita good design and i loved it i gave it to my sister she had bought a house and i've never seen it she says she's got it but i've never seen it hanging in her house so and she, uh, she's very religious so i i am so sorry i made it because it was hours it takes you about i don't know about 60 to 75 minutes to do one of the tiles and it had quite a few tiles but i love uh, machine embroidery projects the the lord's felt says the brightly green the green brightly quilt is beautiful i'm sure your niece will love my cousin will love it yes <laughs> kim saying good night to everybody june says she's talking to tammy so i don't read those joyce says good night everyone Sue says, picking up a treadle cabinet tomorrow to take to our cabin next week. Last time off before the holiday season. So have fun, Sue, on your cabin, your cabin vacation that she's going to quilt. <laughs> I want to know what you're making with the treadle um, cabinet. Are you going to, I've seen some beautiful things made with treadle cabinets. Uh, Diane's got two quilts in works, but she should be, but girl, I got a hundred quilts in work. <laughs> Woo, Clovis Gardner saying I was late getting on, so I miss seeing your cousin's quilt. I know it's beautiful. I will, like I said, hopefully you all are in the Facebook group. I will take some video of it, but y'all know I haven't been editing and uploading any video. So uh, I don't know when you're going to see the video of it, but I haven't even showed y'all my quilts because they went straight into lectures. I didn't even show them with the bindings on. You may have saw them quilted with the batting still around just so that I could show you something. But I got a lot of quilts in my lecture that I haven't even shown you guys. I think what I'm going to do at some point is I'm going to try to finish up all of my African fabric quilts. And I am going to just show you all of my African fabric quilts at one time, I think. And then I'm going to make it a point to do that. But that's going to be like next year sometime. Because <laughs> I haven't, my stuff I don't normally quilt because and you all haven't even seen some of the stuff, probably. A few, a couple of pieces you probably haven't seen. Um, and I got one on my wall now that you all have never seen. I haven't even finished piecing the blocks. <laughs> um. Oh, so she is going to put a machine in it. Okay, because I thought most of them came with a case. I mean, with the frame. So that's good. Okay. 
So good night, everybody. We're going to go ahead and end here. I've gotten through the, to the end of the chat. Thank you all so much for coming in here. It's always motivational to do binding. It's one of my least favorite parts, but I really don't mind it when I'm doing it by machine. But when I'm hand sewing into the back, that is really the worst part. When somebody wants me to do that for them by hand in a quilt, I make sure that it's very costly because <laughs> it's my least favorite part of the quilting process when it's a large quilt. If it's a small quilt, it's no big deal. But if it's a bed size quilt, it takes me about an hour each side or more. So I don't really like it. But um, uh, I appreciate you all so much for coming in here because it helps me stay motivated to get something done. And uh, now my cousin's quilt is finished. I actually sold this whole thing almost with you guys. I just didn't quilt it with you. So you all stay blessed. <laughs> Be safe and quilt out, everybody. Hey, Evelyn Bunbury. She says she just got here. We're leaving. You can watch it when it uploads. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>